Um, but what we, who we, we have today, both um, Tahar Boumedra, who spent three years working for Ambassador Kobler uh, with UNAMI in Iraq, who will be able to shed some light on uh, the uh, what has actually taken place over the last several years and the role of the uh, United Nations uh, and its complicity and direct involvement in uh, the human rights abuses that have taken place against the residents of Camp Ashraf and Liberty. Um, we also have uh, family members of uh, some of the residents themselves uh, to speak in personal terms about what their loved ones have gone through uh, and about their own experiences uh, in that regard. That it was clear from the outset that uh, Camp Liberty was, uh, you know, an exceptionally small space, about uh, a half a square mile, um, a little bit larger in square kilometers. Uh, no protection inside the camp um, from rocket attacks uh, or other potential violence that could be brought upon the residents. Uh, all of the security that had been in Camp Liberty when the Americans were there had been all removed from the camp. All of the four meter tall T walls had been taken outside of the camp and were literally just at the camp perimeter. Um, and the conditions were terrible. The, uh, initially, uh, the Iraqis prevented hundreds of air conditions from being delivered. The generators were operating at 20 or 30 percent capacity, and it was 110 degrees outside on a typical day. Um, and uh, the promises that had been made on the face of it clearly uh, were being flagrantly violated um, by the UN. So let's talk about where we are today. Um, in the last year, there have been three attacks on Camp Liberty. Today, 3,100 residents um, from Camp Ashraf originally who are now at Camp Liberty. And uh, about 2,000 of them have been interviewed by UNHCR, the High Commissioner for Refugees. Approximately 1,500 have been told that they will have refugee status, but none have been given their, paper, uh, their papers demonstrating that they are, in fact, refugees. The UN, uh, the UN Security Council resolution that established UNAMI uh, talked about the mission of UNAMI being to promote and protect human rights. And it also talks about the, ne the need for the safe and orderly return of refugees and for their safety and security. Uh, and uh, of course this is not what has been going on with the residents of Camp Liberty. Um, the UNHCR guidelines on the protection of asylum seekers um, articulates that there are ten guidelines as to how asylum seekers should be treated in a situation anywhere in the world. When you look at the full list of ten guidelines, and UNHCR literally in the last year just promulgated these guidelines again, eight of the ten guidelines are being violated as we speak. Um, and UNHCR has in essence put on blinders and is operating in the camp um, pretending as if the rights of these residents are not being violated. And they're looking at the situation and they are basically saying, we're going to come in, we're going to do our narrow task, which is going to be focusing on interviewing these individual people and determining whether or not they should be considered refugees. Um, and we're going to ignore the rest of what's going on around, uh, around us. Mm -hmm. Now that's problematic for two reasons. Um, they're not even really doing their job in the way that they should. Um, and by that what I mean is that they could have long ago made a group determination uh, and uh, because they're all members of the same organization, which is a death penalty offense in Iran. Uh, they have all been cleared by seven U.S. intelligence agencies as not committing violence and terrorism, and they're all collected in a common spot and face serious danger. These are all the general criteria that the UNHCR manual puts forward for doing a group determination. So they should have done a group determination long ago. They still haven't. Um, the other way that they are um, uh, you know, acting contrary to their own uh, stated purpose and mission uh, relates to the fact that their own manual on the security of persons of concern makes very clear that people who are uh, refugees or asylum seekers uh, or persons of concern more broadly, if there's an attack on their camp, should be immediately relocated to a safe third location. Uh, and this is something, again, that UNHCR has ignored in terms of its own guidelines. And again, UNHCR does nothing to address this. So what are we asking for? In the first instance, because of the security threat, of course the people should be returned to Camp Ashraf. Um, this is logical from a number of perspectives. It's logical because they've been attacked three times, killing ten and wounding a hundred. It's logical because the camp is very small. At a bare minimum, the international community should be calling for the immediate uh, fortification of the camp. Um, you know, the tens of thousands of T-walls that are outside the camp should be allowed to immediately be brought into the camp to fortify the camp. UNHCR should, of course, also immediately 
grant group determination uh, for all the residents, give them all their refugee papers, uh, which I believe is also critical, uh, that the UN ultimately conduct an investigation into what has taken place in this overall situation and the UN's involvement and its complicity uh, and its direct uh, actions to further the goals of the government of Iran and the government of Iraq with respect to the outcome of the situation on the ground and the ongoing mistreatment of the residents and their ongoing uh, security threats that they, that they face.